Are you somewhat curious about the successful traders on social media, especially those that buy penny stocks? Even as a long-term investor myself, I sometimes also get a little intrigued by all these hundreds and thousands of gains gained by these penny stock traders. So let's pull back the curtain and talk about these online trading gurus and why they're so successful. Welcome back to my channel where I help nine to five employees increase their income streams, build wealth, so we can all enjoy the finer things in life. This is the dividend challenge, which I deposit at least $250 into my portfolio every single Monday and Wednesday, rain or shine, no matter what happens. And along with this week's dividend challenge, I will also talk about the secret behind these penny stock traders who seem to be relatively successful on the surface. Now let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the Weeble portfolio. So my Weeble portfolio is currently at $808. And over here, you can see I currently have three stocks in here. I have Oracle, I have Ken, Canon Holdings, and Tapestry. Two of these are the free stocks. Guess which two are free? So Oracle is free and Canon Holdings is free. In order to get your free stocks, you just simply have to go to the link in my info box to claim your free stocks. Please do not leave money in the table. I cringe every time I see people leave money on the table like seriously why this money is free money and another good thing about Weeble is that it also has paper trading which you can see over here for paper trading I currently have 1.5 mil and you can see McDonald's work and Tesla are all up Ultrix is down by 37% Whew, that's quite a lot. Good thing this is my paper trading portfolio, not my real portfolio. And now that we've taken a look at the WeWo portfolio, let's take a look at the M1 Finance portfolio. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio, also named Cherry Pie, because I wanna have a little fun with my dividend investing portfolio. And you can see currently I am at $45,318.38, and I am up by $12,788.68, up by 49.77%. And you can see over here in my Cherry Pie, I have tech, real estate, finance, bonds, healthcare and consumer, and telecom. For the last video, some people asked me what is in my bonds, so let me just show you what is in my bonds. I have LQD, BNDX, SHY, IEI, IEF, and SPHD, which really isn't a bond, but I'm just keeping it here for simplicity reasons. This is the S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF. And let's also take a look at something that we don't usually look at, let's say finance. So within finance, I have JP Morgan Chase, Main Street Capital, Bank of America, Affleck, T. Rowe, and Wells Fargo. And other than finance, I also have healthcare. So let's take a look at healthcare, which I have Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, MDT, MRK, ABBV, MGen, and United Health Group. So all of these are the stocks that I just keep within my little like slices of the pie. And as a fellow Virgo, I just love how organized everything is, how organized M1 Finance makes everything is. And it's also super easy to rebalance if I decide to, just so the... Um, you know, the percentages match up. For example, for finance, currently it's 14.7% over 15%. If I click the rebound button, it is going to be 15% over 15%. So it would just be matching to my preset allocation. But of course, because this is a taxable portfolio, there are some tax implications, especially when I make money, then I do have to pay taxes whenever I sell the shares that I gained money on because you know, Uncle Sam needs to get paid too. And now that we've taken a look at the M1 Finance portfolio, which is my dividend investing portfolio, which is also the portfolio that I use to deposit $250 into the stock market every single Monday and Wednesday, let's now take a look at Fidelity, which is my growth portfolio. So this is my Fidelity portfolio. Currently, you can see I'm at $219,308.78. And today I'm down by 0.44%, down by $970.77. And you can see my one year rate of return on the mobile. It shows a 0.94%, but I'm pretty sure this is not accurate because on the desktop, it actually shows that I have over 40% in gains. So the mobile phone is not really updating yet. It looks pretty bad, I, I know, I know. And in my positions, you can see my heat map, which is a feature that I've discovered on the Fidelity app. And you can see I currently have, this is just my cash and I have Revolve, I have Baba, Tapestry, Tesla, Facebook, 
Plan 13, Disney, FZROX, which is the Fidelity Zero Total Market Index Fund, and there's Square, Visa, MasterCard, Palantir, and ELF. And I did do some buying and selling this week, so let's take a look at that. So within my history, you can see that I've transferred some stocks over. I sold some Visa because I did mention that I want this portfolio to be kind of riskier portfolio and Visa, MasterCard are kind of my safe growth stocks. So I did sell some of them even though I did not time the market right and they shot up by quite a bit after I sold them. Ooh, do not time the market, do not time the market. And you probably know that Tesla has dropped quite a lot on uh, the 8th, and so I bought more Tesla, bought more Tesla, and I bought more Square because that was also the day when all the tech slots kind of went sliding down. So I'm like, hey, a great buying opportunity for Cherry. And you can also see I bought more Square and I bought more Palantir because I am a believer of Palantir, even though I know it's one of the you know top hyped up Robinhood stocks, but you know, you gotta gotta still believe believe in my analysis and in my um, investigation and you can also see i sold some mastercard to free up more of my money so that i can buy these tech stocks and i again transfer some money into this and receive some dividend and bought more tesla and bought more plant 13 because it also went down by quite a lot this week and uh, that is pretty much it for this week. I just bought more Tesla, bought more Square, just a lot of buying activities for the newer stocks that I am owning and more selling activities for the stocks that I've held for more than a year, such as Visa and MasterCard. Now, before I reveal the secret behind the social media trading gurus, let's take a moment to talk about my wealth community, which is a private community for people to learn more about personal finance, income stream creation, and of course, it's also a hub for networking opportunities with like-minded hustlers. To join the group, you just simply have to go to my info box or pinned comment below. Again, make sure you click the link in my info box or pinned comment below to join my private wealth community, and of course, I'll also be there waiting for you. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the social media trading gurus, especially those that hype up penny stocks. Before even talking about social media gurus, let's first understand what is the historical data? What does that tell us? And of course, history does not always tell us about what is going to happen in the future, but it is a pretty good indication of what probably might happen. And you can see the historical performance of the stock market within the span of one year, five year, 10 years, and 20 years. You can see that the more you buy and sell, the more reds you get. So the more chances you are to lose money. And the less you buy and sell, if you just practice buy and hold, which is what I always talk about on this channel, then you experience pretty much no losses. So if you want a sure way to make money in the stock market, just really practice buy and hold diamond hands hold on forever because you do not want to sell short. You do not want to trade too frequently because that can cause you to lose money. Okay, so now that we understand the uh, logic behind everything, the historical performance of the stock market behind the scenes, then how do these traders make money? And so much money, what is their secret? Here is a concept that you might want to understand and it's called pump and dump. And disclaimer, I'm not saying that every single trader in the world uses pump and dump, but this is a very, very common thing in the penny stock world and the OTC world. What is pump and dump? Basically, this is a press release or some sort of news release of a stock trying to hype the stock up so that the average innocent investor is going to buy into the hype and therefore pumping the stock price up even more and the fraudsters or the people committing the fraud behind the scenes are going to dump the stock at the highest price point. Then the stock price will plummet as the people behind the scenes dump the stock but us common investors, us you know, innocent investors who are just watching the news or listening to people online talking about all these stocks, hyping up all these stocks, we will then lose money because we don't know when's the right time to dump these stocks. We don't know when's the right time to sell. And we'll be kind of like trapped into holding these stocks that we haven't really done research on. This is actually not a new concept at all. There are lots of examples, historically speaking, of pump and dump schemes. For example, Stratton Oakman. This is a penny stock brokerage that artificially inflated stock price of penny stocks. Jordan Belfort, which is the criminal behind this scheme, was criminally convicted 
but his memoir was also turned into the award-winning movie The Wolf of Wall Street. Another famous example is Enron, which happened in 2001. Executives at Enron pumped up the company's stock and also performed a pump and dump scheme. Has 29 Enron executives sold the overvalued stock for more than a billion dollars before the company went bankrupt. Another very controversial example is cryptocurrency. And no, I'm not saying any specific cryptocurrency, but because this is a pretty unregulated industry, it is also very susceptible to pump and dump schemes. And of course, these are not legal. Here are just some headlines of people conducting these pump and dump schemes. SEC Securities and Exchange Commissions charge three penny stock promoters behind pump and dump schemes. SEC obtains asset freeze in a micro cap pump and dump scheme targeting elderly retail investors. This is not only unethical, but also illegal. So let me read you Section 10B of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 and Rule 10B-5B. It is defined that it is unlawful to use or employ in connection with the purchase or sale of any security. It is a manipulative or deceptive device or contrivance in contravention of such rules and regulations as the SEC may prescribe. And plus, most investors also lose money with penny stocks. You can see in this diagram that the majority of investors actually lose money with penny stocks. And here is also another example of why buy and hold is the way to go. A simple example is that if you invested $1,000 in the stock market on December 31st, 1949, and you held that investment for 70 years until February 28th, 2019, without buying or selling your investment during the time period in between, your investment would have grown to 1.5 million before inflation or $143,000 after inflation. So what if you do want to take some risks legally? Here is an index fund that actually tracks the most talked about stocks on social media, and the ticker symbol is BUZZ or ZZ, whatever you use. So according to its website, Buzz uses AI to monitor 15 million online posts a month to measure which stocks have the most positive investor sentiment. Then they rank the top 75 stocks each month to feature in the Buzz Next Gen AI US Sentiment Leaders Index. Over the past year, Buzz is up 99.23% according to its website compared to the S&P 500, which is up a little more than 44%. Now at this point of the video, you learn about the secret behind these penny stock traders who seems to be doing so well. And of course, I'm not saying that all of them are a pump and dump schemes, but it is very likely according to the SEC. That's why you really, really have to keep an eye out and to protect your own money because you don't want to fall victim to one of these pump and dump schemes. And of course, it is also highly unethical. A lot of these pump and dump schemes, like the cases that the SEC have shown us they are actually targeting the vulnerable, like the elderly investors. So highly unethical and definitely do not want to get anywhere near these schemes. You also learned a legal way to do high trading or social trading with the index fund Buzz. And you also learned about my portfolio performance for this week. If you haven't already, join my free wealth community linked in the info box and pinned comment below where we talk more about personal finance, stock market investing, income stream creation, and of course, we can network with like-minded hustlers just like us. While you wait for next week's video, I post other videos about personal finance, stock market investing, and luxury living. So be sure you check out these two videos as well. Thanks for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.